ready when you are. I'm gonna take go live. Sound good? Yeah, we good. Ready, my boy? What's the deal? What's the deal? Yo, 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 what's going on, y'all? Welcome back to another edition of Toasted Talk Podcast. I'm Eric Boyd, and with me today, I got Mr. Takeoff T himself, Tony O'Neill. Yeah. And my boy, the man, the myth, the legend, Rizzo Ray. Hey, Mundo. All right, man. Yo, Toasted Talk is a podcast for all the hardworking members of the service and hospitality community. This is a place where we come and talk all the bullshit that we go through on shift each and every day, all right? That being said, Ray, around here at Toasted Talk, we don't start no shift without a shot. We call these shifts, man. All right? Cheers to us. Cheers to y'all. Salancha. Oh, yeah. That'll do it, right? After a long day, hell Yeah. <laughs> All right, y'all. Today's episode of Toasted Talk is uh, sponsored by Teach Me How to Cocktail and the Boyd's Bar. All right, more on them later. Ray, what's good, my boy? Thank you for dropping by, man. Hey, I appreciate y'all uh, letting me in. That's the first, uh, first little, uh, you know, person outside of the group. You know. Yeah, man. This 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 is kind of like I'm I'm, I'm kind of calling this the start of season two. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Pretty much. <laughs> the first season, me and Tony was working through. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get everything man. together. It was a struggle, but, man. But we here. Cameras we're going here. out in the middle of shows. Man, look, it was it struggle bus for real, bro. For real. <laughs> Dude, I was doing a, a video of a haircut at the house during like a freeze. And next thing you know, boom, everything goes down like. Halfway through, I was like, hey, let's go to the barbershop. The barbershop had, uh, Generated. had lights. Yeah, oh, okay. so I finished it there. So the video starts at one place, ends at another. <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was one time we was in the middle of an episode. We literally ended up finishing the rest of the episode off of the camera from the computer. Yo, like he real, literally man. sat right next to me. That was like one of our first episodes. Yeah. Like for real, for real. The camera went out like 30 <laughs> minutes into the show. Damn. Bro. And you can tell my face every time it happens. Like, well, obviously the camera can't tell my face because it's off, but Tony can always see it in my. I'm... <laughs> He'd be like, Eric's mad. <laughs> Y'all can't see it, but he's mad. <laughs> oh, damn. Hell oh, yeah. Shit. All right, right. So, so uh, you already know, man, this is a podcast about the service and hospitality community oh. servers, bartenders, you know what I'm saying? Back of house management, the whole lot, man. Give me your give me your backstory in this industry, man. So in the restaurant industry, I started off at an Italian restaurant called uh, the Pasta Company, mm -hmm. and I was a I was a DMO, I was a dishwasher. Mm -hmm. Hated it because it was Italian restaurant, so you got caked on Alfredo marinara. You got to get a steel wool. You know, my fingers are all chopped up when I was like what 14, 15? Yeah. 
within two years, I was a kitchen manager. Oh, shit. And then, um, but the company was going down under, like, Bombay, <laughs> the owner of the, the whole franchise would come in in this yellow H2 with Hooters girls. He would go into the into the oh, bank. Oh, he wanted them kind of owners, huh? <laughs> and he got like two, three hundred dollars here and there. He's like, I'll, I'll bring him back tomorrow. And I just kept going from there and there. We were always negative. Yeah. So I decided to go to Red Robin. And I worked at a couple of restaurants, but the Red Robin I stuck with for like mm. 13 years. And Shit. I went back to just the cook. A couple months into being a cook, uh, the kitchen manager was like, hey, you talk too much. I'm gonna put you in the front next week. I'm like, all right. She's like, this we, nigga, <laughs> you talk we too much. It. We went at Fucking it all the dead. time, so I was like, she's bullshitting, whatever. Yeah. Uh, come Sunday, I'm trying to look for the schedule, and I'm not in there. I'm like, damn, she fired me for real. Like, I have to go to another manager. He was like, no, you start training next week. And uh, I started training, and we put your ass where you could talk to people. Yeah. My my son's mom trained me. And then I became a bartender, wow. then an hourly manager, then a, just a regular manager, kitchen manager, uh, not kitchen manager, uh, assistant manager, bar manager, and then the AQ, uh, assistant general manager. And then I just traveled back and forth. Yeah, because you opened a lot of bars, right? Yeah, yeah. restaurants, right? Yeah, uh, mostly in Texas. Some, you know, as far as uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, and just went around it. That's dope, man. That's a good job. That's dope. I loved it, but <laughs> once you get uh, once you get married, man, you can't fly out because I would try to be out for like three months at a time because uh-huh. that's how you own it. Yeah. You know, yeah, you can't do that now. Wow. Well, that was that was my next question. I was um, because we did a whole episode on um, on uh, living. Uh, uh, about being a relation, being in a relationship while being in this industry is extremely tough. Mm-hmm. So can you can you uh, expand expound on that a little bit more? The hours, you know, what I'm saying, the and everything hours like are that. tough, man. Because honestly, your bread and butter are the days. Like my wife's a teacher, so mm-hmm. the days that she's off, I'm working hard, like not anymore. But I was working hard because that's when I got the most money. Of course. So we'd have to do days on on the on the weekday where she has to like go to sleep earlier. Mm-hmm. So it. it you know, and on top of that, the temptation of other servers, like, I'm just going to put it out there. <laughs> yeah, put it out there. Cause That's what it is. Especially says. if I'm out of town for three months. <laughs> and I'm over there either doing audits, reopening, doing, you know, something like managerial, you know. Mm-hmm. So these little servers look at you a little different with a little power, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> little thotties. Oh, man, Toss that kitty bro. cat at you, boy. <laughs> Them left and right, man. man. Hey, man, they don't know we get shot at too, man. Oh, Bro, yo, the 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 male servers and bartenders, we we get we them ladies be shooting their shots with us. I'm Bro. not I'm not trying to be, you know, what I'm saying arrogant or nothing. But that's why a nigga really <laughs> had to stop bartending for real, for real. Oh, it yeah. was just it was it was too hectic, bro. Yeah. And when uh <laughs> when you get a little older. They get a little younger. Uh, for real, exactly. you know, I, I really feel like that. Like I really feel like the older I get, the younger these females like that throw themselves at you in the industry. Man. I'm like, bro, how? Like, wh- wh- how? Yeah, for real. Like, I'm I'm like dead ass old enough to be your daddy. Like, yo, chill. For real. You know what I'm saying? I I know, I know. Me and Ray can say that. You still got a few more years before you can say that. Ah, but... uh, <laughs> cat. No what, cat. Please, you forty. Hush. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, man. Okay, so uh, so getting a little bit deeper, man. Um, there was a, a, a situation transpired in your personal life to where, uh, you know, you had to you had to do some time. Mm-hmm. So uh, walk, walk me through what led up to that and the reasoning and your mind frame and everything like that. Walk me through that situation. And, and if it does, if it does have anything to connect to the industry, I, I would like to know that as well. It was a, a regular industry after work kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Me, our friend TJ, a mm-hmm. couple other people went out to Texas Tea. Yeah. And something didn't feel right. Like, I, something just didn't feel right. So I went home. I said, you know, I'm not going to even risk it, whatever, this, this, and that. Um, as soon as I'm pulling in, I live on Grants Lake. So as soon as I'm pulling into Grants Lake, I get pulled over. Mm-hmm. And I did have... I just got there, so I didn't have like a bunch of drinks, but 
he could smell it on mm-hmm. my breath or whatever. So I got in trouble for that. And during that time, it was the, the beginning of like Trump and all that stuff. And mm-hmm. people were trying to get Mexicans out of here. I'm from Mexico. Mm-hmm. So they put me in a immigration camp. I was there for a couple months till finally I got a, a bond to like fight my case here. Mm-hmm. And once I got out, I fought my uh, DUI case. And instead of just struggling with it because I didn't want to have any trouble with immigration, I, I decided to settle. I did a couple months in county, talked to my lawyer, and she said, no, since you have already got a bond, they're not going to send you back. Well, come to find out, Fort Bend County Jail, no matter what it is, they send you directly to an immigration camp if you're an immigrant. Wow. No matter what. Harris County don't do that. Um, Houston PD don't do that, but Mm -hmm. Fort Bend makes it a thing. So I went back. All in all, I was in for like 11 months uh, just fighting, man. I hung out with all types of people. It's not just just Mexicans. It's Latin America, a couple of, I I met a Chinese guy, Canadian guy, and I was out. I was working every day. I had multiple jobs. Mm Mm-hmm. You ain't um, just want to sit there. And there's a lot of Nigerians. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Well, Nigerians come in a lot for school. Mm-hmm. Out of immigrate, uh, out of all the immigrants, the most doctors come from Nigeria once they immigrate over here. Mm-hmm. Most people think they're Indian, but no, it's no. That I definitely why believe. It's, it's Nigerian. Yeah. And uh, to this day, I was talking to my, my friend the other day. They got deported, but you know, God bless them. But uh, once, uh, after a while, you get like desperate. You almost just want to deport yourself. So like, because once you tell somebody, hey, I'm just, I just want to go home, they'll send you straight out. Especially if you're Mexican, you're right there by the border. Mm-hmm. You don't have to fly out to like Honduras or anything. Shit, you're on that bus that night. Damn. But and all you gotta do is say like, all right, bet uh, I want to go back to Mexico, that's it. and they just let you out. Luckily, not too far from that, I had just gave myself to the Lord, so I had somebody to talk to, and mm-hmm. I couldn't talk to my wife. And I just, just kept saying, keep fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting. Because they treat you like dog shit in there. Yeah. And finally, like, the judge let me have it. Like, bad. Made me think, like, man, I'm getting your ass out of here. But thank for the family and everything. All my paperwork, I've always done my taxes. And, you know, I'm not a bad guy. Um, and a lot of people Clear. depend on me. I got to stay. Mm-hmm. And, man, I was so relieved. I was so relieved because... Then I was a resident. Then I, I didn't have to like hide from the cops in case I got pulled over. I can get a license. I can get a, I can go out of state, you know, or go close to the border or even get an ID. I've never, I've never had an ID wow. other than the Mexican consulate ID. Yeah. And they don't take those everywhere. So I was limited my whole life, watching behind my back. And I'm not, I didn't, I've never, never even told my wife this. When I went to the immigration office, if office and I did my testing, I go to a, a clerk and he stamps it, says you're a resident now, and I'm like, that's it. He's like, you've already done the hard work, and I was like, damn, almost in tears, bro. I was like, wow, that's man. Awesome. Ah, bro. yo, I, d- yo, we, we, I didn't even we, know. Yo, we yeah. we been cool for what a decade now. Yeah, you know? like this is the first time Ray sharing this. You know I, I didn't saying? even know that he was gone. Yeah. Like, but I was in Jersey, mm-hmm. and then I came I came back out here, and then it was like, yeah, he he's not, like, well, where is he? Like, he was locked up. What do you mean he's locked up? Why? What happened? Like, yeah. what? A <laughs> lot. <laughs> and that was, and I, I want to say, like, I found out, like, maybe, like, a month or two before you got out. Mm-hmm. And, like, damn, he had already been in there damn near a whole fucking year at this yeah. point. For real, for real, for real. Miss my, miss two of my birthdays. I missed uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas. What else? A couple other things. Father's Day. Yeah. Uh, how did that? Uh, that didn't impact. Uh, how did that affect your uh, your uh, relationships as far as like your marriage and your relationship with your uh, son? I already know you, phenomenal father. That's not what I'm asking. Just how did it affect your relationship? No, uh, it affected Anthony, my son. He's a. Uh, he started getting bad grades, man. And he doesn't do that. Not when dad's home. 
Mm-hmm. I don't play that shit. I heard that. To this day, if he if he gets like a C, y'all can look at me whatever way you like to, but <laughs> I make him do a hundred squats a day until that C turns. Uh huh. And I don't I don't hit my kid. I don't believe in it. Yeah. I don't have to. Mm-hmm. Me, some kids, yeah, they need it, but my kid, he don't need it. So you believe in corporal punishment? You just oh, don't do yeah. it. I don't need to. Yeah. But if the day ever came, I mean. But uh, the wife, uh, God bless her, man. She. Yeah, she's shout paying, out, she's man. She's paying my child support when I was inside. Um, that's what's up. That's support. That's man. a ride or die, right that's there. That's a different. Yeah, that's different, man. Mm-hmm. Shout out, man. Mm-hmm. She was making sure. She always made sure I had phone time because she wanted to hear my voice. She wanted to make sure I was okay. Mm-hmm. She didn't want me freaking out and having panic attack or whatever because I've had those mm-hmm. you go to the end of the world for that woman won't you <laughs> so and she also gave me commissary which you know I didn't ask for mm-hmm. I didn't want you know I worked there when I was uh, when I was inside <clears throat> especially the last immigration camp yeah. you only get one job and you get a dollar a day from that one job I had to keep me busy I in the morning wait how long has it been all right I'm clear. After a year, you can talk about the shit without getting in trouble. Okay. In the morning, I would do breakfast. Five o'clock, get up and transport breakfast because when I transfer breakfast, I can transport transfer other stuff. Like mm-hmm. some people will make like bracelets for other people, and we all talk, send messages, and I, I would give like vegetables to people so they can cook inside. Mm-hmm. Um, then I did the barbershop. Then I, for thirty minutes, I did a uh, cleaning of the nursery, not nursery, the the clinic. Mm-hmm. And at night, I uh, I wax the floors. Okay. So I just stayed busy. And every time I did a job, they'd give me a it's called a Johnny sack. Mm-hmm. So it's just a sandwich with some chips and some cookies. Oh, okay. Um, just stay busy. Just trying to not to have too much on her because I know she's paying all the bills by herself, paying child support, keeping up with my my lawyers. She paid the lawyers and all the fees that came with it. Thousands of dollars, man. Like, yeah. I, I don't know what. I've been trying and trying to like make it up to her, and I, I know she probably thinks I have, but mm-hmm. in my mind, I, just, I don't think I'll ever be able to do that, you know? Because mm-hmm. that was the lows of my low, and she kept me up. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, I heard you mention when you were in there, you did uh, you were cutting hair, mm-hmm. is, which, by, uh, by the way, y'all, uh, my man, Barber Extraordinaire, all, so is it uh, just Facebook and Instagram, or can they find uh, Twitter or anything? It's just Facebook, Instagram, it's Rizzo Cuts, um, R-Z-O Cuts, mm-hmm. uh, Bray the Barber, you know, you can catch me on Booksy if you want to, I cut off the Sugar Land, it's right on 59 and 6, right behind that Target. Absolutely. Um, with me when you need to. Hell yeah. Is that where your uh, your love for uh, for cutting hair started, or was it prior to then? It was, oh man, I wanted to be a barber like in 04. Really? But I was making money as a server mm-hmm. so my best friend at the time uh, rest in peace he uh, he was going to barber college cutting hair and I really wanted to do it but I just felt like he's doing that I'm not going to just bop off of him and I was making money <laughs> <laughs> you seen his face <laughs> no 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 like um, I'm looking at the live and like the screen that I'm looking at right now it's just like my my camera and the, the the camera facing you guys. But on live, the logo never came off. So the logo is sitting there, but it's not here. So I don't know why it, I was trying to figure that shit out. <laughs> uh, I mean, it lags a little bit, but... No, dude, dude. It's been there the whole time? Yeah, like it's... I'm looking at it right now. It's sitting there. I saw you pick a cup up and put it back down. And I was like, okay. Uh, like check to see it, like go on live and see if you can see it like that. Oh nope, it's going now. Damn it, boy! Nah, you go. Go ahead, keep talking, right? So uh, it's going. It's going. Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe it was weird. just be. Maybe it just had a retarded moment. I guess that was really. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, go ahead, my boy. I forgot the name of the barbershop, but there was a barbershop that we used to go to that was on Forty Five and Cavalcade, Ooh. and we hung out there. I know, right? Good. Uh, we hung out there, um, rode motorcycles there, um, played video games. The owner was only like 24. Mm-hmm. 
and we just chilled over there, so I've always liked the vibe. So I would cut my my brother's hair here and there and just fuck him up, like. <laughs> <laughs> I did, boy, dirty. Hey, so, you got to crawl before you walk, but what? <laughs> but when I was locked up, that gave me time to play around because they tell you you just did one size. You want a one? It's gonna be one all over. Mm-hmm. Two, two all over. And that also helped me get like chips and like ramen and tuna and mm-hmm. shit. You know, you want a fade? You got to pass me a tuna, you know, yeah. something. If not, yeah. <laughs> but it gave me a chance yeah, to awesome. practice, man. Yeah. So yeah. Awesome. when I got out, I didn't want to go back to, you know, at the time I was roofing right before that, um, I didn't want to go back to that. It's hot outside. Like, yeah, no, I remember that. It's hot outside. <laughs> Shit, it's hot in here. <laughs> hey, so, really? <laughs> really? That's what we doing? I've been saying <laughs> Damn. So, uh. Yeah, commercial break. <laughs> Back to the tank top. <laughs> oh my God. So I decided, man, I was Work barbering on the, on the inside. I told my wife, I'm going to barber on the outside. I'm going to go straight to the barber college. And as soon as I got out, I got like two, three jobs. Try to make sure, you know, I got busy. I mm-hmm. went out. I wasn't messing around, which I wasn't. I still kind of don't. I mean, mm-hmm. once I play pool, but, you know, it's, yeah. it's, I'm home by like 10, 11. Yeah, cool. When we used to shut it down, bro. <laughs> oh my no god! Shut down bars back in the day. <laughs> oh my god! And open them up, bro. Yo, oh. that's the bad part. Like, shut it down. I'm sure. Yo, I'll, I'll never, I'll never forget opening, helping. Um, what's it called? Flip the chairs mm. at fucking Brewskis. Yeah. <laughs> Flip like, the chairs, chill there for a little while, then go to your mama's garage. Yup. And keep it going, bro. Oh, yeah, them garage turnips. Uh, man. <laughs> but when I got out, man, everybody laughed me and uh, like, laughed at me. Like, you're going to be a barber? Why? First of all, a couple of them, like, barbers don't make money. Lies. Um, you know, you told to be doing, going back to school, this, this, and that. And I'm like, man, left and right. A lot of family, too, just, like, negative about it. I'm like, yeah, I was like, fuck. Maybe the main one. Yeah. I, I told them all, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I don't care. I mean... Y'all can be negative as, as much as y'all want, but everybody's like, just get back to work, go back to the restaurants. I'm like, man, I did it for so long, mm-hmm. I, I don't think I want to do that anymore. Yeah, that should and, kill and, you. And I don't, I, I give much respect to anybody that's in the industry. Don't get me wrong, that is the hardest jobs out there because people treat you like shit because you have a uniform. God bless you for doing it, and thank you. I tip as much as I can, but for me, I think I'm retired. <laughs> you know, I've done a lot of it. The worst thing I could have done was became management because after y'all fuck it up, I got to deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> They're already angry. Yeah. Angry. Mm-hmm. And then I got to deal with this. So. But yeah. God bless you guys. God bless you. Big facts. I ain't even, even going to lie, man. Like, uh, hey, bro, by the way, man, y'all get, man, one time for Ray real quick. Like I say, ain't no yeah. audience out here, man. But, like, Ray, thank, thank you, you so much for sharing that, bro. Like, that, that means the world to me for – you know what I'm saying? To me and Tony, who, you know what I'm saying, we're all friends. You already know we got nothing but love for you. But, you know what I'm saying, to bro. to share, you know what I'm saying, your story like that, man. Like, you know, on, on our podcast, man, like, it, it literally, literally means the word to us. So, but as far as on the manager situation, like, yo, I'm not even going to stunt. I, y'all be the first person I'm looking for. Hey, yo, Table 43 mad. I don't know what to tell you. Bro. Pretty much, bro. I don't get paid for that. Go ahead. Pretty much. I, ain't, I, I, I don't if, get paid for that. If I haven't already blamed the kitchen, I'm definitely, I'm definitely come into the manager next. Like, Because you know how I feel about the kitchen. Oh, and fuck man. you. Yo, Tony went on his whole fucking rant about the back of house, bro, a couple of weeks ago. Oh, this man. nigga was hot. Bro. Oh. That's a first. I'm like, damn it, I fucked y'all shit up. <laughs> Oh yeah, I know the I know the back of, bro, the back of house versus front of house wars. They're silent wars. Yep. They're mm-hmm. secret wars, but they are real. They are so fucking real. Cause I know they I know they be talking shit about us on that line. Mm-hmm. Cause we be talking shit about their ass on the service station. Oh, yeah. I guarantee fucking see it. And you yeah. you know both sides of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I be I don't care. I, I don't care. I lie. If I forgot to bring that shit in, I don't care. I'm still blaming the kitchen. Oh yeah, no, it's I'm always the kitchen's fault. The because kitchen. the kitchen never has to see the guest. They never have to see the guest. They never has no. to have to face that fire For like real. that. So it's always going to be your fault. I don't care. Fight me. 
So, like, <laughs> cause soon as I go in there and be like, "Yo, can I get this on the fly?" It's attitude. That's why, that's why I blame your motherfucking oh, ass anyway. Oh. <laughs> so this one time, man, the man, the general manager's brother was a saute cook. Okay. Something happened. I don't know what it was. I just needed to get a pasta ASAP. I tell mm-hmm. him, "Hey, I need this pasta ASAP. Can you do it for me?" He's like, "Well, what's wrong with it?" I'm like, "Don't worry about it. I just need it. Get it done." He's like, "I need a ticket." I'm like, I'm not going to say his name, but if you don't give me that pasta ASAP, bro, you're going to have to go home. Ain't, I was going to say somebody else's name. Hey, can you make this pasta for me? <laughs> and he started his mouthing off at me. He was like, I'm not going anywhere. I'm like, okay. I clocked him off. You might stay here, but you're not getting paid. Tap. <laughs> so I've done that quite a bit. Oh, you was management at this point. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, he was like, it's all right. It'll get handled by Monday. He looked at me. It was a Friday. I'm just going to go on this little vacation for the weekend. I'm like, all right, cool, bye. I get on the phone as soon as the rush goes away. And I told the general manager, hey, man, because I had a lot of pool at the, at, at, at the time. A lot of people want me in the restaurant. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you right now, bro, your brother acted up. I told him exactly what happened. I'm like, if this cat on Monday shows up without apologizing to me, I'm walking out. Mm-hmm. I'm walking out, and I'm going. At that time, I was like, I'm going to Katie. He's like, you can't, you can't choose that. I'm like, oh, no. I can talk to the, um, he has so many different titles. Like, he kept changing, because it was a franchise. So he mm-hmm. changed the fucking title whenever he wanted. But <laughs> whatever he was um, over all the restaurants. Yeah. I was like, all Whatever right. he wanted to be that day, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I was, uh, I was like, I can just tell him, and he would let me go wherever I want. And, man, this boy took all the way till Tuesday. Like, hey, Ray, I'm sorry. Um, I was really acting up, and I shouldn't have, you know, thought about, you know, my brother saving my job. I'm like, yeah, no, for real. Like, you're, you're, you should have known the way I am. I was going to act a certain kind of way because I'm, I'm polite and I'm respectful to anybody until they're disrespectful to me. Yeah. Absolutely. I always tell the people the same thing. Hey, I'm going to let you dictate the situation. I'm going to act the way you act. I'm going I'm to have the same voice that you have and then, at some point, if it gets really, really loud, I'm going to walk away. And mm-hmm. that's, that's how I am. Yeah. I'm a weirdo. I have, I have this much energy in a day. <laughs> it could either be good or bad, but that's all the energy I have. I'd yeah. rather have good energy all day. Just, mm-hmm. you know. But, Man. Yeah. All right, y'all. So, uh, right by now, you want to go ahead and pay some bills? Yes, sir. All right, bet. Look, man, we going to hit y'all back to back today. Um, with the Look ads. Up for <laughs> what the fuck is you thinking? Never mind. Shut up. Anyway, guys, uh, two uh, two uh, sponsors today. First of which is Teach Me How to Cocktail. Second of which is the Boys Bar. Y'all know them. Y'all love them. Teach Me How to Cocktail is a full service cocktail course teaching an average home entertainer to be a skilled drink aficionado. All right, taking a Teach Me How to Cocktail class is the equivalent of taking a cooking or painting class, but you get to enjoy the drinks right then and there. Second sponsor, the Boys Bar, is the most elegant way to celebrate any special occasion, birthday, anniversary, um, you know, corporate event, team building exercise, whatever the case may be. Tone, take me away. The industry really bit me in 2016 when I was introduced to the world of craft cocktails. Craft cocktails are all about fresh ingredients. Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Eric Boyd, owner and operator of the Boys Bar here to tell you about our newest concept to the brand, Teach Me How to Cocktail. Before we get there, let me give you a little bit of background on me. So I went to a painting with a twist class one day and it really inspired me to create Teach Me How to Cocktail. So I walk into this painting class and it just amazed me how this artist broke down a painting and taught it to others. And that inspired me to do the same thing but with cocktails. Teach Me How to Cocktail is a full service cocktail course teaching the average home entertainer to be a skilled drink aficionado. You're gonna come in, everything's gonna be laid out for you to make three classic cocktails, step by step, and you get to enjoy them right then and there. Eric, where can we take this class? Probably where you are right now because I bring everything to you, the bar, the equipment, the 
booze. Every single thing I bring to you and teach you how to make amazing cocktails. But where else are you gonna go to learn how to make amazing drinks, have an awesome date night, special occasions, birthdays, corporate events, team building exercises. All of these are perfect for Teach Me How to Cocktail course. I guarantee you, you have never been to an event like this. How do you book a Teach Me How to Cocktail course? It's very, very easy. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram at The Boyd's Bar or email me directly at theboydsbar at gmail.com. Allow me to bring the bar home. Come on, man. Come on. <sighs> Should I owe you one? All right, man. I'll tell you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I heard your name was Margarita. Yeah. <laughs> I said, okay, can I get two drinks? Yeah. Really, it was nice to meet you. Really nice to meet you. The way I rap about you, you might as well be a feature. I don't even want to hear about it. Nah. Blog coming from the wall. Fountain. Yeah. Your motivation goes over the mountain. Wanna say, baby, can I get an ounce? Of, can I get an ounce of you? Show me a few things, cool as a hot tank. I don't mean to impress you. Said you a fan to a man thinking he can conquer you. Heard you in Aries, but I don't wanna take you off course. Feeling shaky, cause I know you off course. Plain tickets, yeah, I know you can afford anything more. I know I can absorb. Yeah. I can treat you right. I'm on the north side eating sandwiches with Jersey Mike. <laughs> I yo, I, I, I did it because I was that oh, close to his ass. I was like, I got punched. Yo, welcome back, y'all. I told y'all, during these commercial breaks, we be clowning. Dog. Oh, man. <laughs> yo, Tony and Ray gonna fight after this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, like, I used to, this is when I was working at um, Benihana. Mm. So, mm -hmm. Like, because I was, they tried to get me to be a server there so bad. And I know the service there made pretty good money, but my hourly pay was like, to Barton, my hourly pay was like eight fifty an hour. Yeah. Plus tips. Plus tips. Yeah. And we got tipped out. Yeah. I might go back to the industry. Though. Bro, eight, like, eight fifty in the industry, could, for y'all who know, who don't work in the industry, who don't know, y'all like eight fifty. dollars ain't nothing. No, in the industry, hell bro, yeah. that's bread. You in talking about you bringing in tips. Tips that you're getting from, but it's Benny Hanna, so nobody really was sitting at the bar. Mm. But the people that did, like I had regulars, like I had a, a this guy he came in every Thursday. He ordered the same exact thing every Thursday. And he said, look, for some reason, the tea cost this amount of money. I'm leaving this amount of money. So every time he came in, and I knew he wanted iced tea, I just put in the water. And then that was two, three extra dollars in my pocket every day. Mm -hmm. Like, because he was like, some people do it, some people don't. So I talked to the manager. I was like, look, if I if I run this up as a T, bro, I don't know. Am I embezzling? I don't know. I'm just yeah. <laughs> like, but the money that I made there was so, think about it. You getting tipped out. So you getting that pretty much every day. I used to let mine sit for the whole week. Mm -hmm. So, and then you get a check. Yeah. So it'd be like on check day, I got a whole check and I go grab my tip out. So it'd be like, shit. And at that time, I was still managing at Zoomy. So I had like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I was making a little hustle. But anyway, so because I, I used to close the bar down, I would leave and I'd go to Fox and Hound. <laughs> and there was this server. The first time I went in there and saw her, I was like, damn. Okay. Oh. Okay. Careful, nigga. But it was the end of the night. <laughs> right. Trade with waters, very It was the end nigga. of the night. But but see, that's the thing. That's what the industry does to you, bro. It'd be like, damn, I wonder if I still got it. Let me flirt. Bro. Yeah. Let's see what happens, bro. So that that's what I did. Like, it was purely harmless. Yeah. But, like, you could tell she did not want to take me as a customer because it was... Like, they were closing soon-ish. Like, they had maybe about 40 minutes left mm -hmm. before they closed. But, like I said, I, I'm in the industry. I know how it is. So, they going back and forth with the other chick. She like, nah, bitch, it's your table. So, she comes. She's like, yeah, 
My name's Mercedes. What can I get you for money? Mm. And her name Mercedes. Mm. <laughs> she looked like one. Yeah. <laughs> she wasn't she wasn't like a viewer or yeah. <laughs> Not a viewer, bro. She a whole <laughs> saber out here. She was a C class. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I'm like, all right, let me get um trying to show the fuck off. Uh-huh. But I did make some money that night. I was like, all right, let me get a, a shot of Remy. Clap the hands and everything. Yeah, yeah you got it. <laughs> Nigga. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm like I do want something to eat, but you know, let me just get some fries because I ain't trying to hold you up too long. So I'm like, and that's really how I do when I go into a place like, Uh like, man, look, I'm about to be in and out of here. Like, don't even worry about me. Matter of fact, you can ring my shit up now. I'm going to order another Remy and then bring me my check. Mm -hmm. And then I'll close out right then and there. You ain't got to worry about me for the rest of the night. Mm -hmm. Like, go about your business. Yeah. She did that, brought me my fries, gave her the check back. Of course, it was like a 50% tip. Mm-hmm. No, it might have been like a 100% tip. Bro. Like, <laughs> so, literally, she walked away, came back, sat down, Ooh. and was like, where do you work at? And I was like, Benny Hanna. She was like, I knew you had to work in the industry because uh-huh. people in here is cheap. And uh-huh. I was like... But really, this is really kind of like an industry bar. Yeah. Like, yeah. swear to God. Always, always has been. Swear to God, I'm working at Ra Sushi. Mm-hmm. And this dude that I work with was like, all right. Um, I said something about going to Crack Republic. And he was like, I was like, yeah, I'm about to meet my boys, karaoke. He was like, who, TJ? I said, how in the fuck? Bro. <laughs> How in the fuck? Like, this, this man, man don't know me. I'm like, bro, how did you know I know? I was like, yeah, that's my nigga. She was like, yeah, I know him. Yeah. Was, this man like, knows, knows everybody the in the entire restaurant. city. Everything in bro. the industry. Everybody TJ knows in the industry. everybody. Everybody, bro. Before I met TJ, I, th- I thought I knew half of Houston until I met TJ. And then at the end of the night, we try to get TJ to go home. He's getting people's numbers and bro. everybody getting social <laughs> this security nigga numbers. Know everybody, wow. I, that was the that was the weirdest thing in the world. He was like, "Oh, who are you talking about, TJ? How the fuck?" So for like, those who don't know, if you have him on Facebook and you're listening, yeah, we got we got to have him on the show. Yeah, bro, we got we got to have him. He's on under the Thomas show. Jefferson. <laughs> he has oh a, God. a grouchy voice. He's a good dude. Bro, I'm trying to tell. You. Yeah, we got we got to get TJ on, man. If he's if you're listening, TJ. Get over here. <laughs> but so I went back the next time. Uh huh. Shorty was still there. Mm. So this time, oh. it wasn't like I don't want to take this table. It, she was like, No, nah, no, nah, I got it. So, uh huh. Yeah. He yeah. went my regular. This whole energy I got changed. It. <laughs> Everything changed. And it was like it was like for like a, a cool like probably about like a month that I would just go in there maybe once twice a week mm. after I got off. And we just sit and chill and just mm. talk and shit. And it'd be the same thing. Every once in a while, I order something other than fries. Yeah. <laughs> but once she realized that I was going to take care of her, she didn't trip about mm-hmm. anything. And literally, like, I'd be like, all right, where's your section? You could have walked in there clothes, and she'd be like, no, nah, I got you. Yep. Mm-hmm. Just make it quick. Exactly. Ooh. Exactly. <laughs> Ooh. I was going there be like, Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Yo, I, need, I need that as a sound. I got to get that as a fucking sound. <laughs> Oh my god! Hey, bro, y'all know today Prince's birthday? I uh, just found out from you not too yeah, long ago. Nah, I just thought it was interesting. Figured, figured y'all want to know. You know what? <laughs> I, don't, I don't care about celebrities at one bit, but when Prince died, I actually cried, man. No oh, shit, For I real? actually cried. Yeah, yeah. I cried when Mike died. I didn't cry when Mike. I felt bad, but I'm more of a Prince fan than a Mike fan. I love, I love yeah. Mike, but I've always just been that way. Then I, I, I respect, I love and I respect Prince, but I'm, I'm definitely more of a Michael fan. If I had to pick between Mike and Prince, like Prince is a fucking genius. Don't it's, get me wrong. It's not even that. fair. But it's, it's not. It's really not even yeah. fair to like when people try to put them in in the same category. It's like, but you have to understand, Mike's catalog is ridiculous. Now the difference between when when you talk about musically, okay, Let's because. Talk. Because Prince could play <laughs> multiple instruments. Yeah. Multiple Maybe instruments. Maybe he taught himself. Yes. Mm. And he was probably one of the greatest producers ever. 
Absolutely. But when we talk about just hit for hit, you yeah. can, you can't beat Michael. It, it's just, I think I think that's the problem with everybody yeah. in the like. If you're talking about what he did for other people's careers, Prince. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I'm not I'm, not, sure. I'm not knocking on Michael at all because I'm I'm listening to him to the day I die. But the only it's it's just two different things. So Michael Jackson is a performer, while Prince is an artist. So. Michael Jackson, you could put him up with a good producer, and he'll make a, a smash. Mm-hmm. He knows exactly what to do, what to say, and he does it to perfection. But when it comes down to like Prince, he, he pieces it together yeah. bit by bit. You know, mm-hmm. so it's two different things. You know. Yeah, I feel you. Michael's like a perfectionist too. <laughs> like very, they both were in their own in their own way. Oh, when choreography yeah. though, nobody beats Michael. No, 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 it's, it's I love less, Beyonce, but he's in, still, he's in, that. he's in a, he's in a class by himself. Oh, right? he's still, yeah, he's in At class 50, all by himself. He was himself. still doing it, yeah. yeah, like he was twenty. Yeah, all right, totally random, but since we did touch on music, this is totally off script, y'all. We did not rehearse this, but oh, Ray, Lord. since you were here, I just feel like I had. This is not a debate, guys. It's just a simple. <laughs> this is exactly why he's laughing and I'm laughing. <laughs> Because we always start with the, this is not a debate It's not a debate. It's not but a debate. But what ends up happening <laughs> is that we sit and debate. Oh, it's going to be good. Oh, my you God. You already know what I'm about to ask, Ray. Top five rappers. Dead or alive? Your, dead or alive, your top five. Not the consensus top five. Your, Ray's top five. Dylan, Dylan. Because <laughs> <laughs> he spits hot fire. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> man, I have so many, and uh, man, I don't look the part, but man, I, I've been a, a student of hip hop for years. So, mm-hmm. I with can, me and I can give him that. Yes, I can yes, give him that. I, I can verify that. I can give him that. <laughs> Number one is always going to be Biggie for me. Okay. Number two, and people are going to think I say Pac. I just didn't. I didn't vibe with them at the time. Number two is MF Doom. I got Doom tatted on me That's a couple different. times. Uh, number three, Little Brother. It's a group. Ooh. You can put them in there. Oh, my God. The <laughs> fucking minstrel show. Dude. Oh, my God. I don't understand why people don't consider that like a, a classic, classic album, bro. Uh-huh. Uh, all, the whole album? Don't no. loops. Fruit loops. Yeah. Yeah. Which is crazy because it wasn't like the best of the best, but it was up there. I could literally. That's cover to cover. Yeah. Like, I don't have to skip. Front to back. All, front yeah. to back. Yeah. That is. Right. Um, DMX. Uh, and people probably going to say, oh, it's because he passed away. No, I've been a big DMX fan. I bark at my wife. I bark yeah. at her for years. <laughs> just like, arr, arr, arr. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking dead. <laughs> I'm laughing because I believe him. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I totally it believe him. Sounds this like thing. something he would do. Yeah. Right. And uh, Jay Z. Jay Z. Okay. All right. Damn, little brother. <laughs> you didn't expect that, huh? I saw little brother here with dilated peoples, bro. Oh, Great shit. concert, bro. Man. Where was it at? Uh, Warehouse Live. Oh, Warehouse Live. Okay. Bad. Bad. Is that still open? Yep. Yeah. No, it's still open. Earth Gang's coming oh. to House of Blues. Hmm. I want to okay. go see. I'm mean, the only one that's gonna. Oh no no no! I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead. Uh, Jay-Z, mine. Jay Z. Jay Z. Jay Z. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, anybody that knows me, these guys know me. Anybody that knows me, any way, shape, form, or fashion, y'all let it know. Hove is the pinnacle of hip hop to me. Just in my personal opinion, I feel like he's. The, I feel like he's the greatest to ever do it, man. Uh, catalog is crazy. Mm-hmm. Bars, cadence, just. Lyrics just front to back. He, you know, what I'm saying, Hove, Hove is number one for me. Oh. Um, so past that, um, like I said, just my personal top five. I'm not saying, you know, like I said, once again, not consensus, just my personal. Uh, so we got Hove. Um, is this in any particular order? In any particular order, Hove is number one. Let's oh, just go ahead and get that. Uh, but everybody else, is everybody just, else, just any just particular in order. Uh, Hove, Big, uh, Lil Kiki. I know that's that's a weird one, but I'm a Houston boy, and not big. I not just big. feel like I, yeah, key key is key is my boy. Uh, Hove, big, 
Kiki. Um, once again, like Ray, I'm not somebody that has Pac in my top five. He just not saying that he wasn't great or deserves credit. He just didn't do it for me. Um, yeah, mm. for real. Uh, let me see. I got two left, right? Um, I'm going to go Wayne. Mm. And let me see. I got one more. He's it's in the front of my mind right now just because I've been listening to him lately. Tony, you're gonna like this kiss. That's my boy. <laughs> that is my boy. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> Cause since he did Little Brother, I was about to say, yo, you know what, Bumpy, because I'm not because I always do like Styles P and then I say Jada Kiss. I was like, man, yeah. I'll just say D block and just toss the yeah, whole Just toss the whole thing in there, there right? Bro. And then that it's cheating, but it's the truth. <laughs> like, cause man. D-Block's all great together, but mm-hmm. even Separate. by themselves. Separate. Separately, oh yeah. God. Man. Jada's last Snig- album. Oh, my. And still, like. Still. To this day. Bro. <laughs> so, I Bro. Sounded, so I sounded like a big backpacker, huh? <laughs> I, was, I was a backpack rap kind of guy when I was growing up, you know? Like, I did the underground shit. Like, yeah. Love that shit. Clearly with MF Doom shit. That's yeah. something you don't hear every day. But I, I fucking respect it, though. Yeah. I respect Dome. it. <laughs> Dome. Hell yeah. All right, my boy, you on the clock. All right. Well, um, <laughs> Jigga. No, this is no particular order because I I can't, I can never do that okay. because it's all in stages for me. Like, mm-hmm. Is there one rapper, though, above all, all of them? And a real hip-hop fan probably doesn't have one. But for me, it's just always been big. That's tough. It is. Um, Cause I know you know your shit. Um, yeah, that's the least of your words. This motherfucker know. Mm-hmm. <sighs> this, this is a tough one. Like I, <laughs> because of how, because of his catalog, it would have to be whole for me. Okay. Mm. Just because of the amount of albums that he put out and the amount of just fucking classics. classics. No, yeah, good. And, and the people he helped get up yeah. in the process. But, so, Hove, D Block, Three Stacks. Oh, okay. mm-hmm. oh um, man. And you always, I was told you, man, you look like Three Stacks. Everybody bro. always fucking like <laughs> Yeah, this nigga do look like Andre Three Stacks. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> three Stacks. What's that, three? Yeah. Um, I unlike I do have to put Pac in there. I gotta put. That's Pac fine. He's a poet. I respect it. Oh no, no, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm sorry. I took him back off because I forgot to put Biggie in there, and there was no way that <laughs> Pac was going before Biggie. And shit, I named my dog Biggie. <laughs> yeah. Um, after Big, one slot. Vanilla Ice. Shut, Shut the fuck. Dude. Get out. <laughs> yeah. All right, y'all. That's been another episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, man. I don't know. Um, I can't stunt. Oh, Wu-Tang. Mm. That's respectable. That's respect right there. All day, man. Did y'all niggas literally was about to wear that shirt today? I was, I was gonna say, I anybody still got woo wear? Did yes. anybody ever have woo wear? Now have you woo-wear. have woo wear now? I don't have it. I have a fucking yellow. You still shirt. got it? It's a yellow shirt. It says woo. I was listening to Wu Tang this morning, actually. Where? No bullshit, bro. Yeah. It was on uh, YouTube, and it was like, let's put music, and you know how to choose. Yeah. Yeah. It just went through 38 chambers. Your playlist always be fire. Like yeah, anytime I come get my hair cut, like yo, like yeah, for does. real. If y'all looking for a barber experience, man, like no, yeah, no was, cap. Uh, the first you, time I left, I was tipsy as fuck. Yeah, right. <laughs> and my man provided. Can we? That's that's legal, right? Oh no, this is a complimentary drinks. Yeah, yeah complimentary. Yeah, there not, we I go. I don't charge for drinks. Yeah. I got beers. I got yeah, cocktails. Man. I got uh, juices, sodas, whatever you need to just kick back and relax. Private room. Music. Big screen TV. 65 inch on the TV. Um, I'm sorry. No, because I'm thinking about what we was watching. We last time we said. Bro, but the funniest shit was, they, I guess, the dude had this fucking pot. 
He was filling the pool up, and he just kept running back and forth from the river with this little ass pot. Right. So I'm sitting here dying like, this nigga, this little ass pipe, he's filling so, this thing up for days, bro. So for the people that don't know and don't know what we're talking about, I started putting on these two guys that build structures out of mud and plants and all kinds of trees and stuff. And it's so mesmerizing to them. It helps me out because the conversation does have to be, you know, very good. And on top of that, they're mesmerized by what they're doing. And I just don't have to worry about them fucking moving around and talking and just do my shit. So, yo, I ain't gonna stun it. worked because I was just, I did bro. move. I'm just sitting up there looking at this shit like. The second one, they built a house, bro. Yeah. These niggas built a house. The one after I left? Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> These niggas built a house. Elaborate. Ho- that shit was str- With bro. detailed. They had a patio, like a little. like a like a little balcony, like everything. Bro, I'm like, what the right, fuck? With some right. bamboo sticks. This shit is ridiculous. Yeah. I hope y'all know what we talking about, man. Like, I, if I could tag this channel, I promise you, I would. But like, bro, <laughs> but it was the water for me. It was him in that fucking pot. Because the other dude was, while he was filling up the pool, the other dude was doing something else. Oh, he was he was going finding grass at other places, uh-huh. like. <laughs> like sod, like getting the grass from somebody else and bringing it back to the little pool zone. <laughs> so he putting grass around there, and this nigga just back and forth with this just damn a pot. L- little Bro, ass pot of water. This pot was like this big, <laughs> and he was just one pot, <laughs> one pot. My man's didn't even take two pots, <laughs> one pot. Went to the river, filled it up, and the pool was like four feet deep, oh, and it went man. around. So I'm like, bro, what the fuck? My man didn't even take two he pots. He didn't even take dead. two pots. He only had one pot. Then when the dude finished with the grass. Yo, this nigga mad. Look at him. I am, bro. Because I'd be like, yo, fuck that grass. Come get these. Come get this water with me, bro. We put this grass on there later. And you oh know they made God. them pots too, man. Bro. That shit had me dying. I'm like, oh, I was man. just in awe. I'm like, this man, this goddamn pot. <laughs> Racing there talking to me. I'm like, my bad, bro. I'm just sitting here. <laughs> just in the one fucking pot. That's the only thing on your mind. That's the only thing I could think about was, why this nigga only got <laughs> one pot? Man, you're my brother, bro, so I wanted to talk to you. But most people, I put it on there just so they just mesmerize. Bro. I'm just, I'm just cutting away. Yeah. I was in I was in shock and awe. Oh, my God. Hey, yo, y'all heard about, uh, y'all heard about the latest Apple news? What? So now they about to come out with a feature. You can unsend and edit text messages that have already been sent. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, if you belong to the sh- oh, it's about to be hot boy summer, bro. <laughs> okay, <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Yo, yeah. do you realize how many people about to be upset that they can't get their receipts no more, Never. bro? Tish is already pissed because she saved her receipts. <laughs> she saved her receipts. She like, man, I can't even save my receipts no more. I'm good. Because <laughs> now you can unsend and edit even something that's already been sent. You can edit it. Or if it's already been sent, you can be like, nah, I didn't mean that. Delete it. <laughs> Bro. I had the most toxic ex girlfriend <laughs> y'all could imagine. And I had an HTC phone. I'm sure phone. we've all been there. <laughs> HTC phone. I loved it. Yeah. I did great with it. I, and it was. It was a good time. And I had it for a month. And then she's like, no, you know, you're, it was like 30 days to return or whatever. She's like, you got to return it. You got to get an iPhone. I'm like, no, you got to get an iPhone. Finally, she made me get an iPhone. Made me get an iPhone. Mm-hmm. I'm like, all right, cool. At the time, I was stupid. I didn't know all the shit that the iPhone did. So I traded it in, no cost. I'm trying to make the shit work out. And she grabs it. She's like, oh, okay. Mm-mm-mm. Now I can know where you're at. Yeah. Now, now I can know if you read my message and just ignored it and all this other stuff. I'm like, God, what the fuck? Like, this is what you wanted me to get this for? <laughs> bro, I, 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 I'm telling you, even he was talking to this girl, right? Yeah. And I, I just happened to lean over the couch and I saw a fucking green bubble and I'm like, ew, who's that? <laughs> And, and her name became Green Bubble in my phone. Oh. Yo, she literally came over to the house. I was like, oh, this Green Bubble? <laughs> <laughs> Stig was like, bro, you so ignorant. I'm like, ignorant bro. Fuck, I would do the same thing. That's as, as iPhone users, like, I, of course, like, the world already knows we're bougie as hell. Mm-hmm. Because we don't want to see no Green Bubble. I see a Green Bubble, I'm like, oh, God. Like, what, why? What has become of you? Why do you Peasant. have it? 
<laughs> right? <laughs> <Peasant>. <laughs> How dare you? Bro, but this shit about to fuck the game up, dog. Bro. This shit about oh, to fuck man. the game up. Like you said, no, I didn't prove it. Prove it. Hot <laughs> boy summer. Oh Everybody about to belong to the streets. Bruh, this is about to test body. every relationship. <laughs> this is testing all relationships. <laughs> right? Apple know what they doing. They toxic as fuck, bro. Yo. They they really testing everybody loyalty. For real, you man. You gotta like, go through Snapchat no more. Bro. <laughs> What social media platform or like just yeah, what social media platform y'all think get motherfuckers caught up the most? Insta. 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 Yeah. Hot sliding in them DMs, huh? Yep. Mm-hmm. Insta. Yeah. Snapchat, it goes away too quick. Because it don't stay there forever. Yeah. And even on Snapchat, it'll tell you if somebody like screen recording your shit or like screenshot your shit, huh? I don't know. Uh, I don't I don't, I don't use Snapchat at all, so I don't know, but it's just what I've heard. It used to be Facebook. Well yeah, back in back in the glory days. She i still be on Facebook. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> nah, back, back. Courtney say, don't be texting my phone with no damn green bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> damn, <bro>. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking peasant. <laughs> Yo, I swear. Like, if I were single and I went to get a number, I'd be like, all right, well, text me so I can lock your number in. And a green bubble came up. Nah, never mind. We good. You never mind. fucking lie. Ne- I'm not lying, bro. I'm so you lying. wouldn't hit just because she got an Android? Something, something about her soap not right. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. This nigga say something about her soap not right. Yeah, I don't know. I hate you so much. <laughs> like, <laughs> she got those stones that she puts under her. Bro, yeah. <laughs> Erica. Yeah. Oh, Erica Badu. Yeah. For real, for real. Oh, you shit. Ain't got no, you ain't got no iPhone. Uh, something <laughs> weird, bro. <laughs> oh, like, when's the last time you ain't heard, like, really trying to holler at you and she be like, oh, FaceTime me. If you can't say, if you gotta say duo me. Yeah, big face. <laughs> big or facts. Facebook Messenger me. Yeah. No, I didn't know Duo was it. Duo? Yeah. Am I old? Do I just not know? You don't have to know because you have an iPhone. Yeah. We have FaceTime. So we have something that oh, really matters. actually makes some good money. Yeah. That's what you're saying. What happened to that whole thing? Like, wasn't iPhone and Android supposed to be able to FaceTime each other? They were supposed to make a FaceTime oh, app for Android. These Android people were telling me, no, now we can. It's the same now. And I'm like, no, well, it's not. No, it's not. And the quality of Duo is trash. So it was the quality of Facebook. Yeah. And as as soon as you do owe me, it looks like Minecraft. Like, (laughs) pixelated. I I swear I was just about to say that, bro. Like, Android talks so much big shit about how good their cameras are. But have you ever seen a video recorded on Android? And then have the nerve to ask you the quality of the video at the end of the video. That was the quality. (laughs) Shitty, nigga. Like, for real. The no, simple fact that no you had stars. to ask, <laughs> yeah, zero you know stars, it's bad. no stars on your ass, <laughs> and you had to ask. When I when I hang up a Facetime call, Apple never asked me how yeah. was the quality. We already know it was straight. <laughs> we know you was good. Mm-hmm. He went from one iPhone to another iPhone. <laughs> you good, right? Android. We just want some feedback. How did it go? What can we do to make it better? Yeah. Everything. You can do everything to make it better. Call Apple. That's how you can make it better. <laughs> Call Apple and, and figure out what the fuck they're doing. Hey, forward them niggas over there. Yeah, right. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Uh, oh, man. Ray, you got anything you want to add, my man? Man, it's, it's a good time, bro. It's a good time. You had a good time Enjoy on that? This, yeah. Hell yeah, man. All right, man. Thank y'all so much for watching another episode of the Toasted Talk Podcast, powered by the Boys Bar. Look, y'all, do me a favor. Same as last week, same as every week. Please go like, share, uh, follow, and subscribe on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, guys. And just letting y'all know, I've been to the Boys Bar, and I've been a bartender for a long time. It went above my expectations. Yeah. I didn't. I, I had no idea what's gonna happen, but. <laughs> Major I, I, was thinking, I, was, I was thinking, you know, it's going to be whatever I've seen before. No, not at all. Great it's time. Really fun time. Everybody gets their own individual, everything. So check it out. Definitely worth the money. Y'all should tip this guy a lot more than I did. But Thank you, my boy. That on top of that, real, man. Rizzo Cuts, Sugar Land. Yes, sir. Rizzo Ray, Facebook, Instagram. Ray the Barber, man. Y'all go follow my man. Support the business, all right? Look, man, same time next week, same bullshit next week, all right? We're going to see y'all then. Peace. Bless y'all. No. Like a off? Myself, I was 
What up, baby?